Welcome everybody. Today, the fabulous Duncan Dickinson, font of all knowledge in relation to Redbox, is going to show us under the bonnet of release 1.6.1. Thanks, Simon. Uh, and um, thank you for, for um, giving me the opportunity to go through 1.61 as well, Simon. What I was going to do today was go through uh, the 1.6.1 release. I wanted to sort of talk about the, the various uh, facets of it and then briefly mention 1.6.2, what's going to happen there. It's not going to be anywhere near the size of 1.6.1 and uh, then try and have a good chunk of time for questions, etc. As Simon mentioned before, I put some links in the, uh, the chat window, uh, which one is the uh, link to the demonstration site, which is what I'm going to use here. We, we've updated that to 1.6.1. And um, I've also put a link to the how-to page, which is a, uh, largely a technical piece on, on how to do customizations. As you, as you think of things um, to, to ask, etc., please do throw them into that, uh, that chat area. That would be great. Before I start talking about 1.6.1, I guess it's important to, to couch it in terms of how it started off. So Amanda Nixon at, uh, at, at Flinders University uh, spoke to us about putting in self uh, data management planning tools into Redbox. And um, that's, that's what the 1.6.1 project has, has focused on. Uh, we worked with uh, uh, sorry, the QCIF team worked with Amanda and uh, Grant at Flinders, as well as the, the team at, at Deakin. Both groups were extremely helpful in working out uh, what, what uh, functionality was needed and um, testing, etc. Uh, so I'd like to thank them as well for their efforts. So I'll, um, I'll make a start. I'm presuming that uh, everyone can see uh, my red box screen with the researcher dashboard. So 1.6.1 adds this researcher dashboard that, that did sort of come in 1.6, uh, but it, um, it wasn't um, very complete at that point in time. The, the way it's been set up is, uh, in Redbox speak, it's, it's a, a separate view. So as you can see, it doesn't have the admin links, it doesn't have all of the menu items. It's really aimed at researchers to log in uh, and, and start working with. I guess part of that is if you're not wanting this functionality, uh, one of the things is that it's, it is a separate link, so, so um, you know, don't, don't hand out the URL. So this is what we call the researcher dashboard. It provides some key areas. Uh, the menu over here on the left uh, allows you to create a plan, plus also create a self-submission for a data set or a collection. On the right-hand side, you can view the plans that uh, you uh, are creating. There's a, another section that comes in under this if people have shared their plan with you. Beneath that is a, a list of data sets. So these are the self-submission data sets. Uh, we basically have draft data sets, which are ones that uh, the researcher is working on at that time. And then they submit that to the main review workflow. So what are the one of the key things in 1.6.1 was we went back and, uh, by we, um, Andrew Brizzati and the, the technical team, went back and undertook a couple of uh, major tasks within Redbox. One is they redefined um, or created a new um, set of uh, code for handling workflows and handling forms to try to improve a lot on the, um, the old form handling, uh, which is what we, we traditionally use in the, uh, the review workflow. So it's important to know that the review workflow, the old Redbox workflow, uh, is still there, it's still running, and it's still running in its old, old code base. So what I talk about here um, in terms of customization won't apply for that review workflow until uh, a later time. Uh, the other thing that uh, self-submission calls us to do is allow for individualistic ownership um, uh, within Redbox. Largely we've handled things by roles. So what we'll also see here is that um, there is an owner for these records and it's an individual. Uh, the last thing you want is all researchers being able to see everyone's plans. Okay, so picking up on the data management planning, we have a, um, the ability to add a new data management plan which, which as you'd imagine, creates a new set of forms. What I'm actually going to do is go and look in at a plan that I created this morning. 
uh, mainly so we can uh, get in and um, start looking at it. So if I click on that plan, so uh, as in all good cooking shows, here's one I prepared earlier. And you can see here we've got our display screen uh, with the various bits of information that we provide. One of the uh, functionality items we added was the ability to turn the information uh, about the plan into a PDF. Uh, in, our, um, in our speak, it's, it's a transformer. And basically, you give it a template, uh, and it will allow you to, um, to, uh, to create a PDF, but also uh, with local customizations, you know, your, your organizational headers, etc. And an important uh, feature uh, raised by the group was the ability to look at previous versions. So you can actually go back and look at prior versions of that PDF. Important to note that's not prior versions of the record, it's prior versions of the, the generated PDF. Okay, so we've got the project overview information and we've got various fields, um, various additional items that people can add. We've broken it up this way uh, so that the first form tries to grab information that's useful from the start and then at later date the researcher then um, it can be encouraged uh, to, to go in and uh, enhance their information as it becomes available to them. So for example, um, they may not have sorted out data licensing and access from the very beginning, uh, and um, at a later date we'd like to try and capture that from them. So I'll go in and edit the draft. So one of the first things that you'll notice is it's a reasonably straightforward web form. Uh, sorry about that. Um, that was um, some strange audio that we got. Seems to have gone quiet. All right, um, so, so one of the reasons that this is reasonably straightforward in terms of its layout is to provide uh, for customization. It's a lot easier for people to come along and customize to their various needs if we really give a, an ex example layout that can then be made uh, more complex, et cetera. Uh, we decided not to have a more complex layout because then it's hard to work out what's actually doing functional stuff and what's actually doing um, form stuff and layout stuff. Okay, so some things that you've uh, hopefully come to expect. Uh, there's inline help. There's the uh, validation, uh, the fields, etc. But actually, uh, what's going on in the back end is quite different to the old forms, and I'll talk about that in a, in a few moments. Uh, so I, I won't go through uh, the form page by page. Uh, that is up on the demonstrator, uh, and it is available for you to, to go and have a look at. Um, the demonstrator, uh, when you when you do go into it, uh, you can log in with the username researcher and the password researcher, and you can start creating records there. So, we collect a number of fields, and the, the decision really was that um, I'm just going to push through these. The decision was that most sites are going to probably sit down and work out which fields they want to encourage their researchers to collect uh, and potentially add fields as required. Uh, so. Um, these are indicative, and we're assuming that uh, individual sites will customize as they need. Okay, so I'll save and close this. Uh, it's a series of um, fields, etc. For the demonstration plan, I've then got a few options. I can go and view it, which is what we saw at the beginning. I can edit it directly from this screen. I can download the PDF. I'll just pop into the PDF for that one. So this basically is a PDF version of that display screen uh, for the record. Now, this is a template that we use, much like in other parts of uh, Redbox. So you can do things such as put your, your um, institutional logo at the top, you can put headers, footers, um, color, etc. What actually drives this is an XHTML template. So it doesn't need you to do anything fancy with PDF or anything. It's just creating an XHTML file. I can delete the record, uh, delete the plan, 
deleting it does delete it for as far as the user is concerned, but it actually transfers the ownership back to admin. So the admin gets um, that record in an ongoing manner, which means that if they if the user actors accidentally deletes it, they can contact the administrator and ask for it back. Uh, we thought that was a handy safety net. The other thing that I can do is I can share the plan. Uh, with the security that we've been putting in for this self-submission work, um, you basically end up with one user who's the owner, and the owner can edit. When you share a plan, you're sharing view access. So those other users can't edit the plan, they can merely view it. And the reason we did that is it saved a lot of effort around locking records, around dealing with two people editing at the same time, etc. It just says there's one viewer, they're probably the data manager, and they're probably the one if you are in the team and you, if you don't like what's being put there, uh, to um, go in and um, that, that they should be contacting the owner of the record rather than editing it themselves. So I can actually share this as researcher. And I'm still listed, the demo user is still listed as the owner, but researcher now has view access. I can of course delete that. I can transfer ownership, which means that I'll lose edit access of that record and it'll pass over to the to researcher. But for now I'm just going to close this. So in the researchers uh, in the researchers dashboard, they'll actually see plans shared with me, and that will include the demonstration plan and let them go and view that. So handy for teams that are establishing their plan and wanting to share it around uh, and discuss it. Within the demonstration plan, towards the bottom here, you'll see data sets and add more data set. Uh, just notice the spelling error there. Um, what this allows you to do is create a data set based on the plan. Uh, now, of course, uh, uh, a plan and a collection description are not one-for-one -one swaps. You can't just copy all of the metadata over perfectly, but we do have a bridge that allows you to bring metadata over that you deem as useful. So where you add fields uh, to the, the planning uh, and you want different fields, for example, in your, um, your uh, data set or collection description, uh, you can actually set that up so that we'll transfer between the two. It'll do a copy. Okay, so if I go into the demonstration collection description, that is a self-submission interface for describing collections. Uh, so we've got the, um, the details regarding the, uh, the collection plus a link back to the, the plan that it, this uh, collection relates to. There is also in the dashboard the ability to create a collection description that is not related to a plan, it's just a standalone, um, which uh, could be useful for, for older collections, etc. Uh, but this way, of course, means that you can have a plan that links off to the different collections related to that plan. Uh, I, I'd imagine that a long-term uh, research project will produce more than one um, collection, and this is a way to, to uh, one data set, and this is a way to capture that. If I go to edit my data set, again, uh, You'll see the similarity in the form interface, uh, and I'll talk about customization in a, in a bit. Uh, so this is the self-submission of a collection, and it's uh, the various fields. Uh, we are at this point limited uh, in the fields um, to what is actually in the review workflow. So this eventually has to get over to the review workflow. If you add fields in here that doesn't that don't exist in the review workflow, it, they're not going to display there. Uh, Redbox will capture it, but they won't display. Uh, so these all map across uh, to fields in the review workflow. Uh, most of them uh, Redbox users will be used to, uh, as a title, type, description, etc. And this allows me to, uh, as, a, as a researcher, to go through and um, uh, describe my data set. There is uh, one area that uh, we did put in which is slightly different from the review workflow, which is where they nominate that they would like a DOI, we, we don't allow them in the form to create a DOI, and that's largely because of the management that should occur around a DOI, uh, rather than someone just going creating lots of them for themselves. Um, and the, the normal inline help and uh, form validation. So if I return back to the home page. 
So the demonstration collection is sitting there um, whilst I'm working on it. Uh, it's in my inbox, as it were. I can, though, when I'm happy with it, send that off for review. Uh, now that heads off um, in the current, uh, yeah, out of the box, it heads off to the metadata review stage. And I'll just pop over, it's demo self-submission for review. And if I go to my other browser, if it will open. This is the, the old review interface and you'll see the demo self-submission for review. Now what happens here is that leaves, um, in terms of uh, edit access, it leaves the researcher and it head, heads over to metadata review uh, so that the librarian or the data librarian is able to review that and then put, put it through the various processes to have it published. What allows me to do though as a researcher is I can go in and have a look at uh, the records that I've submitted and I can see where they're up to. So for example, if um, uh, somebody was waiting on, on a record to be published uh, in relation to a journal article, for example, uh, they'd be able to see where it was in the review stage. Um, so I guess general, um, the general points there was uh, around the ability to create and view a data management plan, uh, to look at the, the PDF uh, that, that's created from the data management plan, that you can go in and have extra sections that are added at a later date. You can add a data set, either as a standalone or in relation to a plan. When, you're, uh, when the researcher is happy with uh, the data set uh, description, they can then send it off for, self, um, for review uh, and uh, that's then picked up uh, by reviewers uh, for eventual um, publishing. Back in the dashboard, I'm able to share plans with my colleagues. Uh, obviously, I'm able to um, delete the plan and the, the user interface here, of course, has been uh, more uh, refined, I guess, for, for a um, for a researcher group uh, rather than the, the, all the admin menus and, and all that, uh, that that was in the old interface. So that was a, a very a quick look at uh, what 1.6.1 offers. Um, it's uh, I think it's it's quite a a strong set of uh, of additional functionality. It's it's a set of uh, functions that, that people have been asking around, and um, uh, it's. Um, hopefully then something people can pick up and customise for their local versions. Um, so in terms of customizations, I, I won't go into the, the overly um, the technical aspects, um, but a few bits and pieces are going on here that don't go on in the review, the old review workflow. So first of all, the various text on the page, like the titles, the field labels, the help files, they now come out of a language file. They're not actually embedded in the, the form itself. It calls out to a language file. So one of the options is if you don't like the help that we provide or you've got further resources you want to suggest to the, the user, you don't have to go in and edit the forms. You just need to edit that language file, which is just a text file. And um, you, within that, you basically just pick the field you want to change and the text you want to, to, to put into that. Instead of um, defining a big HTML JavaScript um, form, and we have a, a model which is more of a, um, a component model where you put a series of components in. So for example, in, um, in this, you've got a heading, which is a component, then you've got a project name. Um, so that's actually a, a, a label component and a text box component. So you actually build it by putting these components together. Uh, putting these components in. Uh, and the idea there is that um, within that file, it, it's not a huge HTML file, it, it's really a, um, a set of um, components that you build. The other, um, the other key uh, customization that we provide is uh, a system uh, we call transitions. So one transition is when we go from a plan over to a self-submission data set. And transition basically, uh, it brings metadata over to a new object. Uh, so in this case, from a plan, it takes the metadata that you need over to, um, to the self-submission 
uh, forms, and the other, uh, and sorry, that transition happens immediately. So when you, when you're in a, a plan and you say, add another data set, um, it uh, it does that on the fly. The other transition that we have is when you're finished with a self submission, uh, that. Um, and you, you've sent it on to review, that's picked up by the system every 15 minutes. It looks for everything that's been tagged ready for review and that then applies a transition um, into the review workflow. Uh, so that doesn't happen immediately for the user, um, but it, it does that in a 15-minute in a, um, in increment. You can reduce that increment to, to five minutes, one minute, uh, whatever makes sense uh, to yourselves. So that uh, transition as well is a um, is a customizable um, template actually. Uh, so you basically say this form field goes to that form field in the new field uh, in the new form, or, or this form field. To, um, don't worry about it; it doesn't go across. Um, so obviously, between a plan and a collection, there are certain fields that you, you wouldn't bring across at all. So that's some. Um, that's the the 1.6.1 um, feature set and and the work that can occur around. Uh, customizing it. Um, I'm not uh, of the, the thought that uh, most sites, if they roll this out to researchers, would have a big red box at the top and lots of red all through it. Uh, they'd probably put all of the branding. So we've got uh, documentation about doing branding. Uh, so you, you know, institutional logo, etc., around it. Uh, so we've tried to keep a lot of our uh, more um, a lot of our layout to a, a minimum so that you can see where things are happening rather than where a lot of fancy uh, CSS or, or JavaScript is going on. Uh, so that's um, that's 1.6.1. What I might do there is I might hold and I'll, I'll talk about 1.6.2 um, towards the end there, Simon, but it might be a good time to see if I uh, just blasted things through things a bit quickly if people want me to pick up on specifics. Okay, um, so those with that don't have microphones, please um, put your questions in the chat box. And um, if you do have a microphone, it might be, in, well, by all means unmute yourself and ask a question. I, while people are, are typing in their questions, I, I've got one for you, Duncan, just to start off. Uh, I'm, and this is probably me, just me, but if you could, can you just go back to the um, the project plan where you can the, the form where you can enter a description. Um, there was a plan and there was a there was a field there for a description of the yeah now. Um, when I so I have a project, I put put in a description of that project there. Does that become uh, an activity record for the project? What's the, or, or is it somehow related to the data? That I'm just a little bit hazy on what you're capturing there and where it goes. Well, the, the description is really about um, the, the project that, that, that you're undertaking. Um, with the alert system, uh, and um, you've uh, prompted me on two areas that I, I, I didn't cover. Um, so alerts and also, uh, and I, I wonder if Amanda's sitting there going, Duncan, you've missed stuff. Um, yeah, and, I'll ask her um, in <laughs> so, so in the alerts, for example, that's where something like a research master or similar system could actually start off a plan. And what goes on there is that um, some system sends through information that could start off a plan, and we actually have a, a um, an element in the system that will allow, say for example, Professor Smith um, has entered a, a new project that they're doing in, in, an in the, the research management system. Uh, that comes through as an alert. Uh, we actually, we, we have a, some components there that will allow you to not only create a data management plan, but allocate the ownership to Professor Smith and make them aware that a plan's waiting for them. So they get ownership for that. There's Amanda. Uh, and um, that's, so that's the incoming. In terms of an activity record, we provide, so, so we provide a link to the funding source and the grant numbers, but the actual turning of 
this into a, a, a data management plan, into an activity, uh, was, was something we, we really didn't cover as part of our discussions. Um, Amanda, did you want to talk to that at all? Um, I think all I've wanted to say is that you've probably seen from what Duncan's shown you, there's been an awful lot of development here, an awful lot of thinking, and while we were working collaboratively, we don't have, um, we can't think of everything. So I think that what you've brought up, Simon, is something we started to talk about probably towards the end and probably something that we could uh, discuss further down the track in more developments of Redbox. Um, the way it's working now is that the stuff is effectively coming in from uh, something like Research master very early on in a research project and could even be before a research project has funding. So the information that's going into here can change. Um, I know talking from our research office, the information that they have in their, um, their system is very preliminary and changes a few times before it actually looks like something you'd get that would be suitable for an activity record. So and I know that's a hazy answer, but yeah, that's about where we are. So, so what what happens to the description that I would put into that box that's showing? Where does that go, if anywhere? It'll well, just sit there, I think, won't it, Duncan? Yeah, that's stored with the plan. Uh, we decided not to transition that to the data set when you create a data set description based on the plan because uh, I think, as Amanda quite rightly pointed out, that your description of a a project or um, is, is likely to be quite different from the, the description of the data set. Uh, so within this, the, the data management uh, planning side of things is, is largely a, uh, an internal uh, administrative uh, system that encourages researchers to flag that they have a, um, that they're about to do research, uh, that um, they have some information about that, ethics, where they're going to store it, trying to get them to think about things like data licensing and storage, hopefully from day one rather than uh, day last day minus one. Um, so uh, one of the areas I think as well, I, I see your point, Simon, about creating activity records, um, but I, I wonder the, um, I, I also wonder sometimes with groups going out, say for example in Amanda's team, going out to researchers, trying to get them on board with data management planning. Uh, it, it might be an easier sales thing at this point if, if it's just to help the researcher and potentially give them services within the university. Any publication of that information, say as an activity record, then creates a level of concern, I think, that they would probably, you wouldn't want them to moderate what they were putting in because they were concerned of what potentially could you leave the university. Uh, it's just a thought. Mm. Um, now there's a question from Susan Robbins, which I'll read out um, in case people aren't looking at the, the chat box. Uh, she asks, Susan Robbins asks, who assigns researchers the login to start creating a record and is there somewhere in the system that stores, stores them? Um, probably those logins, yes. Did, it does, can you see that question? Yep, yeah. yep. So yep. in the most basic version of Redbox, there's an internal username and password store. Uh, it's not something we suggest that, that most groups use. So groups that use, say, for example, LDAP or AAF, um, basically as long as they're in the researcher role, so there's a role called researcher, and you get access to this uh, dashboard if you're in the researcher role. So your LDAP plugin for, for example, for authentication and for roles, um, it, it would really say that um, if somebody logs in via LDAP, um, they get put into the researcher role and then they have access to, to the, the forms. Um, that's also uh, an important aspect because of the way that um, the authentication works. You actually um, would type in, for example, the person's, um, say, university login or LDAP login. Uh, it there. We, we don't do lookups mainly because they're, they're quite large and, and, and quite often difficult to get access to the LDAP lookups for that. Uh, so w one of the key things there is that uh, uh, yes, they, they authenticate. If they're in the researcher role, they have access automatically. But you don't need to do anything as long as you've set it up that way. Uh, the other thing is that when they're then sharing their records, the main, the, what they need to know is the, the login that their uh, associate uses and 
quite often in these, we, we felt that was pragmatic in terms of the, the trade-off between the technical and the human. Is it probably quite easy for one member of the team to ring or email someone and say, this is my email address, could you please, uh, not my email, my account, could you add it to that box? Great. Um, see, let us know, Susan, if um, if that doesn't answer your question properly. Um, Beth, Beth Crawther from the University of Sunshine Coast has a question. Um, Beth, would you like to unmute and ask it yourself? I always prefer it if people can speak. Can you do that? Can we hear you, Beth? Oh, sorry, sorry, I was fascinated trying to Good. unmute. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> This is, this is kind of the first time I've, I've actually seen Redbox in action, so this might be a dumb question. But is there a way of, of somehow putting a link to or a PDF of the ethics form into here? That, that's, a, um, that, that's a good question, Beth. Uh, there is a way. Uh, what, we, what we worked on um, is a series of components that um, met a, a good baseline of, of items um, that, that you could put together. Um, so out of the box, we don't have an attachments widget, which is what we, we have in the, the review workflows. Um, that being said, we have another project on the go at the moment where they definitely do want um, attachments put on. So uh, we're looking at extending and, and adding components to, to do attachments. So um, out of the box, no. Uh, when I talk about these widgets, they're, they're reasonably straightforward widgets to, to create. Uh, for us, it was really just a, an issue of time. And over the, the coming months, we expect to, to have a, in, an increase in the, the number of widgets available. So we'll add them um, as projects require. The, the main thing we didn't want to do is just have lots that um, yeah. potentially won't use. But yeah, the, the form attachments was certainly one that people have, have flagged as something that they want. And we have an active um, Pay for project at the moment where we need to do it, so it's uh, it needs to be done. That's great, thank you. Any questions here? Any more questions? No, something we hear, Mike. Uh, Mike Lynch has just asked. Uh, yes, Mike. Um, yep, yeah, I'm sorry, Duncan. I I was away from um, work yesterday. I know you were in a teleconference with some people here at UTS and Intersex, so apologies if this is covering existing ground. I'm just interested to know if, if we're collecting records from a data capture service um, and bringing them into Redbox via the alert system, would it be possible for us to inject those records into the self-submission self workflow so that the researchers can edit them, or would they still have to go straight into the review workflow? Yeah, that's, it's... Um that is a good question. Uh, sorry, I'll stop saying that's a good question. They're all good questions. Yes, Mike. Uh, so, yeah, you, I mean, one of the pains with, with that the people have raised with the, the review workflow is it's quite long, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the things that we did was um, uh, when you submit a self-submission data set off for review, it, you can go into, it's configurable as to which stage it goes into. It could go into final review. An incoming alert, uh, we worked on a system where the incoming alerts in this release, uh, you can create a new plan based on an incoming alert. But the code around that, when we talk about the difference between these things, like a, a review record or a self-submission record or an alert record, uh, there's nothing uh, overly technical going on in the background. They're, they're largely properties set on the object. So uh, the alert system yep. can set those, set those uh, properties. Uh, and Andrew and Grant, um, so Andrew and QCIF and Grant at uh, Flinders worked on, uh, or have been working on the system in which the alert comes in um, and you could assign it to whichever type of object you think is appropriate. So is it a, is it a, a plan, is it a, a self-submission or is it a, a review workflow item? It will then okay, also cool. as part of that do a lookup um, and uh, assign a security context to it. Uh, so, for example, at, at Flinders, yep. uh, we get a field which I think is the email address of the primary investigator and we use their LDAP yep. lookup to work out the username because the username doesn't come through in mm -hmm. CSV and we apply that to the record so yep. that that person, when they log in, they will see that plan. 
Um, I mm -hmm. couldn't see why that wouldn't work on self-submission either. Yep. Cool. Thanks. Um, Grant, uh, I think this is more a clarification than a than a question. Um, but Grant, would you like to to speak to this? This is Grant Jackson. You got a mic? Can we hear you, Grant? Uh, yes, I just found it unmute. Can you great. hear me? That's great. I think is that's what you're doing. You're just um, that's right. Just I just wanted to clarify. Assertions. That's right. I just wanted to clarify uh, an earlier uh, query, um, which uh, just to take a step back, which is the the evolution of this project is that is. The, the main purpose was to create data management plans, so all the fields go into um, a form and <clears throat> result in a PDF, and that is a plan for the researchers' use or, or the research team to use to um, plan how they're going to manage their research data. Um, then one of the things that comes out of this area quite a bit is people put in information and later on they put in similar information into a different form so um, oh okay so, actually so the description field that you're asking about before uh, Simon um, that ends up in the plan so that's where where it's visible to people in a PDF or on the HTML form here the second part of it is because there's a whole bunch of information that could be used potentially um, for a project which is what you were querying or a data set because there's quite a bit of overlap it's been chosen to put it into a, um, a collection or data set metadata so it, it finds its way there and some of the fields for example description it was chosen that the description for a plan might not quite match what you want for a data set so um, you get the opportunity to put in a different description when you convert it to a data set that's what I was attempting to clarify. That's great. Thanks. Um, are there any other any other questions? I might just pick up on on one area that I, I did neglect to to discuss. Um, and it's a, a very brief one. It's it's that of triggers, and one of the the requirements uh, within the project was to to uh, when, when something happens. Um, we we can handle that some way in a trigger. Now a, a good example is. If, a, if, a, if we receive an incoming plan uh, that's being associated to Professor Smith, one of the triggers is that uh, on a you know, periodic basis the system checks if a new plan has been created for somebody and can fire them off an email using, a, a, again, a template. We love our templates. Uh, that says, Dear Professor Smith, there is a plan waiting for you to go and fill in. Um, please contact us if you have any uh, questions, etc., etc., as per your requirements. Uh, we, we've done a very elementary version of that, uh, which, which is to, to define what, um, uh, to create in the system the ability to define it, um, what you're trying to look for in, in terms of a, a trigger. Uh, so it, it really also opens the door for things such as when you're creating a plan saying I need to store 200 petabytes, um, you know, the system might then be able to send off an email to the IT help desk saying you might want to go and speak to this person to find out where they're going to store 200 petabytes. Something like that. So the trigger is is a way that hopefully these plans can fit in with your organisational processes and provide a service to the researcher that, that fires off a, uh, an email or, or some other form of communication that says, you know, it might be a good time to speak to this researcher to help them. Uh, a good example might be if uh, they don't have an ethics, you know, the, um, an ethics clearance, it might be worth um, coming back to them. So one of the things that I, I think for anyone looking at 1.6.1 um, and, and this functionality um, is to really look and say how, how would this work in our organisation, what's the process flow, you know, how do we want people creating plans, how are we going to support them, all that service level stuff that almost sits outside the technology and then with your flow diagrams and your various event um, models etc, you then come back to Redbox and say now let's start putting this together. So that whole organisational thing is, is quite a big question and I never um, underestimate how long that would take.
um, especially if you need to take that through several committees. Mm. Um, Amanda, uh, one of the last week when we had Toby O'Hara from um, University of Western Sydney, I asked him a question about the collaboration that he had been uh, undertaking. Um, I just wonder because this is a fantastic good news story in a way. The, the, the collaborations that have been going on around this. Would you just like to describe that, you know, how this is how, how this collaboration formed, who was involved, because I know Deacon have been involved, um, and and the pros and cons from your perspective. Sure. Um, <clears throat> this all started um, well it was Duncan's fault was part of it. We, from the very beginning, wanted to have data management planning functionality as part of our metadata stores project at Flinders. Um, we weren't quite sure how we were going to do that. And when uh, we started looking at them, I was just bouncing ideas from Duncan, and Duncan said, well, you know, we can put it in front of Redbox, and other people have been asking me about it. So I guess that's, that's one of the first planks of the collaboration. Um, then just using the red box list, put the call out and got a great response from a number of um, a number of institutions, including Newcastle, uh, UTS, um, uh, Deakin. And now I'm going to forget one. Uh, University of Western Sydney. So Toby was there as well. Uh, and then we made it clear because a lot of the development work was planned to be done over the Christmas period and people were going to be taking leave that I was happy to be the main liaison but I really needed a backup and that's where Deacon um, uh, put their hand up for that and that was terrific because we did work very closely with Deacon in the end. Um, that was terrific for a number of reasons. It gave us different expertise and different sets of uh, requirements to talk about so it means that we've probably ended up with a much less Flinders-centric product than we might have ended up with. Um, it was also terrific to have a, another institution to bounce ideas off of and also to take advantage of their expertise, particularly their technical expertise. Terry at Deakin has been fantastic. I think it shows the strength of the teams on both sides in that the project manager from Deakin um, moved on to another project uh, a few weeks ago and we got a new person to work with and that worked well as uh, also. Uh, in terms of the cons, it added another layer of pressure in that we had to work to, to multiple deadlines. So we had an earlier deadline than our collaborators, but we had a lot more flexibility in meeting that deadline, whereas other people had much harder deadlines. Um, so it was just being aware of what issues were happening in everyone else's institutions. Um, but other than that, on the whole, it was very, very positive and I think coming from a place where we have worked with open source software before, uh, a lot of the people that we're dealing with in this space, particularly that have come from library backgrounds, we've worked together before on other um, projects which has been really useful. Um, and also it just seems a waste to not do stuff collaboratively when there are so many projects around the place and people using the same software. That's about all I'm going to say, I think. Okay, that's terrific because, um, you know, hopefully there'll be more of these over time mm -hmm. because it doesn't stop here. Uh, I'm just wondering, just before Neil uh, says something, uh, I'm not sure if, if Terry is there at Deakin or because a deacon is present, but I'm not sure if Terry's there, just whether there's someone from Deacon who wants to say something. Perhaps. Yes, no? Doesn't look like it. Maybe they're, it's taking okay, a little while. Coming. They're coming? Yes? Hi, Simon. I'm in um, Terry here. Ah, Terry, good. Hi, uh, can, can you hear me, Simon? Yes. Um, we're not generating too much sort of static or feedback, are we, in the, in the background? No. no. Oh, good. good. Um, no, I just wanted to say that, um, yeah, pretty much to um, just reiterate what Amanda said, that um, uh, certainly the, uh, the collaboration with, um, yeah, with QCIP and with uh, Flinders to, to sort of produce the, um, the data management planning tool has been a, I think a really positive experience for us here at Deakin. Um, it certainly expanded our initial thinking around, 
I think how we're approaching the metadata store. I think um, initially we probably weren't as focused on the data management planning side. We were more looking to provide a researcher uh, sort of interface for the self-submission component. But I think in uh, teaming up with, um, with with Flinders and and you know sort of combining those requirements, I think it's resulted in a sort of a much more sort of feature-rich tool, which is certainly going to benefit Deakin as well. I think in terms of um, in terms of what we're doing um, for our data management um, sort of projects as well. So um, no, I uh, just also just want to thank Duncan for his um, and, and the team there for their for their great work. It's certainly um, I know it's been a, been a challenge, but I think that the, the product that um, that, that um, they put out has been really fantastic, and I'm sure we'll get a lot of use out of it here at, uh, at Deakin. So I just wanted to, to thank you guys for that as well. Neil, you want to? Yeah. Um, hi, Amanda. Hi, Terry. Hi, Grant and Duncan. Um, first of all, I think um, you are all to be really strongly congratulated on what you've done. Um, you. You may not know, but research data management planning has been something which um, here at ANS we've been agonizing about for months and months. And I have a simple question, which is the set of questions that you have arrived at, um, what are they based on? Or where are they primarily sourced from? And I'm presuming other people's work. If so, whose? Yeah. Um, I might just start off with that. We started off at Flinders by drawing heavily on the Curtin tool. So Curtin University had a data management planning tool that they demonstrated at the eResearch Australasia conference um, in 2011, I think. Yep. And so that really was the starting point for us. Um, and then um, a little bit more reading, we started adding more things in and then in the beginnings of the uh, collaboration we had, I sent it out to the other institutions and then we got more and more. Uh, and so then it was a pairing back. But I think uh, conversations that we had with Deacon and I remember the exact words with, with Megan, this is a starting point. Um, we don't expect this to be the be all and end all of a data management plan for any institution. Um, at the moment, we also don't know. There could be more requirements that come through from funders. We don't know. But this is a template that, as Duncan has said, is uh, flexible so that institutions can change it according to what they want to capture, how they want to capture, what terminology they want to use, um, and hopefully we'll be able to adapt as uh, the landscape changes. Fantastic. Terrific. Well mm -hmm. done. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a, it's a really significant step forward uh, to have that. Uh, so um, with that, and there are no more questions, I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Duncan. Fantastic. <laughs> and um, next Sorry. week, we're gonna, there's, go, there's a completely different view. Oh, there's another question coming in, is there? Wait a moment. Yeah, sorry, Simon. I just wanted to mention 1.6.2 yep. just very quickly if oh, I can. Oh, of course. That's right. Okay. So in hindsight, maybe we should have called this 1.7 because it was quite a substantial amount of um, uh, functionality. 1.6.2 might be a disappointment then to everybody when I say there's not going to be a lot of feature or any feature enhancements in 1.6.2. The team are working on a couple of security and bug fixes. Uh, and so um, especially those people who are on the security mailing list for Redbox, you'll have seen uh, Andrew's posted, we fixed a, a few security issues. Uh, and um, we'll be doing some bug fixes, so hopefully I'll get an ETA out um, uh, in the coming week or two about when 1.6.2 will come out. Uh, but yes, it won't be anywhere near the size of, um, of, of what you see in this current um, release. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Duncan. <laughs>